one supported by it. Those are my answers. Okay. Any questions on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign. Motion carried 6 to 0. Next item 2.01 audience participation. Is anybody here wishing to address the school board? Let me read the statement to you. Individuals addressing the board shall take into consideration the rules of common courtesy. The public participation portion of the meeting cannot be used to make personal facts against the board member or district employee, which are totally unrelated to the manner in which the board member or employee, or employee performs his or her duties. If the, if the comments constitute a complaint against a board member or an employee, the board member or employee has the right to request a closed hearing. State your name and address there. Kathy Fields, 22670 Wood Creek Drive, Taylor. Um, as promised, I'm here to beg for some money to feed our robotics. Tomorrow night is their final build. Somehow the word White Castle and Teenager just don't fit in my vocabulary, but that's what they want. So if anybody is willing to um, donate, cough up some cash, we would greatly appreciate it. They were the, they and some of the parents, including Mrs. Orn, wrapped gifts, a lot of gifts that we could give our kids. So uh, I'm collecting before you leave, and I know where all of you work, so they need it by tomorrow morning so she can purchase dinner for the kids tomorrow night. You'll, you'll cough some up. <laughs> Does she have a, 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 a price? No. What, whatever money they get, that's how many hamburgers they... they <laughs> last time my, my car smelled like White Castle for a week. <laughs> okay. Well, as, long as, on me as long as they don't have an eating contest, you're all right there. <laughs> and actually, Kathy, my wife made the chicken last week for their kids. They really enjoyed that. So. Well, I guess the White Castle is a tradition. Yeah. The last build. Yeah. I just don't want to be anywhere around there two hours after they've eaten it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Kathy, I'll contribute, but I'm not sure where it fits on the food pyramid, but I'm still going to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> It's not broccoli and it's not ranch dressing. Understood. <laughs> All right. Anyone else wishing to address the board? <clears throat> Motion to close. Motion for Mr. Zorn to close August participation. Support by Doug Myers. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Hold the same sign. Motion carries 6 0. Next slide. 3.0 superintendent's report. All right. Thank you. This is a special meeting, so we, uh, assistant superintendent and I don't have a written <coughs> report per se, but I do have three things just to talk about. Uh, number one, I want to make sure I, I share with everyone that tomorrow night at Truman High School at 645, we will have a uh, an honorary recognition for Chuck Suttles. Coach Suttles has been coaching since 25th anniversary year. Uh, State Champs, The Sports Show, and The News Herald will, will both be there to help honor Coach Suttles. So if uh, if you're not uh, busy with White Castle and watching the Robotics Build, um, or you could do both, you could support the Robotics Build and come um, help recognize uh, Coach Suttles. So I'll be, I'll be there with uh, uh, Lauren, our athletic director, of course, with uh, Principal Skopczynski. So uh, that's the first thing. <coughs> Second thing uh, the board has uh, in front of or at each of your tables something from Risa and this this document is actually rather lengthy I'm not going to read it but I will uh, note that there is a deadline on here for you to uh, do a couple of things um, you could do nothing or you could do a couple of the resolution options that are listed on the back couple of pages but if you notice on the bottom of the first page it said one interpretation of the law requires local boards to hold one public meeting to consider this resolution prior to the meeting in which they adopt it. Kind of like what you would with a board policy, where you do a first and a second reading. Another interpretation, though, says um, you can just read it, review it, and do it all in the same meeting. Um, however, it does say uh, districts are advised to check with their legal counsel for guidance on how to proceed regarding how meetings are structured to comply with this requirement. So. Um, just wanted to make note of that um, as we're looking at this. Um, just so happens our legal counsel happens to be in the audience, and so I'm sure he can help uh, with this 
uh, at a later time. Um, that's okay. That's okay. I will scan and email it. Um, so uh, this isn't something we have to act on with any sort of haste. The, the deadline's in May. Um, so we do have quite a bit of time, but I wanted to make sure we had an opportunity to look through that and uh, take a look at which one of those resolution options um, we were interested in, in supporting. And again, this is for the uh, Wayne Risa Board of Education uh, Board Member Selections. Uh, these are six-year terms, and they have two seats available. So um, please uh, give that a read, and then we can take a closer look at that as a board later. Third thing is a uh, TVLA update. We had a good meeting last week um, with uh, Pat Scott, with Jackie Lansing, and Tommy and uh, Melissa from Kennedy and Truman, really taking a, a look at where we started as a district with TVLA and then where we are now. TVLA was opened in the 12-13 school year. Uh, it received its own school code number that year, but it didn't have its own school improvement plan until the 13-14 year. Typically, if you open a brand new school, you, you don't have a plan. So you have that first year as a working year to build your school improvement plan. So the school improvement plan was in place 13-14. Um, currently, we have 303 students enrolled. 79 of them are from out of district. And so I know one of the things that the board shared with me, certainly some members of the board shared with me when I got here, um, was that part of the intent for TVLA was to, to really address kids who were no longer in school. Um, kids who might have come in from out of the district, um, kids who might have had various circumstances that would keep them from being in school. Maybe um, they were dealing with a difficult illness, or maybe um, they had been removed from school for behavioral reasons and then they were on the way back in. And so that, that seemed to be kind of part of the, the genesis for TVLA and also with Titan going away, it, it kind of morphed from you know, a hybrid online uh, virtual learning academy into a quasi-alternative ed and a hybrid virtual learning academy. So, you know, one of the discussions we had at the, at the administrative level was, it seems like for four years the program has run and run really well, it's growing, but we haven't had any framework around how students transfer. And so an example I gave the principals was, if, for example, in the third week in May, we had a student move in, let's say, from a neighboring school district, but physically move in. By law, you have to enroll that student. And let's say that student has a 4.56 weighted GPA. They're only here one week before graduation. Would that student be the valedictorian? And right now, there is no language that says they would or wouldn't. And so I, I use that example to bring up a, a bigger discussion about what we do, okay, we as a district, when, when we need to take a look at things okay. internally, so we, we just need a process. We need a process in place that helps define movement. And so if the intent, of, or part of the intent for TVLA is we want to make sure we have out-of-district out of seats available, we also know we need in-district seats available because sometimes we have students who are behind on credits and might otherwise drop out of school. TVLA is a fantastic opportunity for them to learn in an alternate environment and to play credit recovery catch-up. But if we fill all of the available seats at TVLA with students from our two high schools, then we don't have any room for students coming in from out of district. So part of our discussion centered around how students move, when we should allow them to move, and the fact that we currently have no language that restricts that. So we wanted to take a look at recommendations about, okay, do we have differential movement up until the, the start of the 12th grade year, and then once you're in, you're in, and that's the school you graduate from. So, um, a great discussion. We're coming up with a draft document. It's almost done, and I'll have that to share uh, with the board really soon on what we're proposing. And currently, because we don't have this document in place, it'll be essentially a process for transfer from Kennedy or Truman to TBLA, and then from TBLA back and then graduation requirements. Right now we have two ceremonies. We have a ceremony for Kennedy, we have a ceremony for Truman, and TBLA students who are graduating are embedded in those two ceremonies. And that's what we're doing this June. However, based on where we're headed, it still doesn't really, in my mind, address the student coming in from Southgate. If the student transfers in from Southgate and has never attended Kennedy or Truman, then why should they get a Kennedy or Truman diploma? And why would Tommy or Melissa sign it? You know, so I, I, I think that third diploma is on the horizon, and so that's something we're working on as well. Um, and with its own school code, 
and Principal Lancino over there, in effect, is the third high school, uh, among other things. So um, I think that summarizes where we left off. Uh, Marianne, am I forgetting anything? No, nope, I didn't. We're all set. I didn't know if, if we were um, doing a, a telephone call or we're all set. Well, I don't know if the call came in. I don't think there was a ring yet. Okay. Okay. So, but there's one other relevant point I don't want to, but, and that is that, I mean, we still have X number of kids on wait lists out of district to come in. Potential revenue. We currently have kids on, on wait lists um, from out of district. And so, you know, we need to take a look at obviously securing more mentors. Right. Um, currently, at over 300 students, the program is, is as large as it's ever been. So it's nice to see that over the four years, it's made steady growth, and um, you know that's fantastic. Uh, right now, if you look at the costs associated with running the program, they slightly outpace the revenues coming in from out of district. So raising out of district participation would make it a break-even program. Um, just. Uh uh, great. I, I'm the ambassador of TVLA. Love the program. Love it, love it, love it. But um, I have a question, and uh, I don't want to sound like the devil's advocate on this, uh, but, but you brought up mentors. Um, and I believe uh, we have an MOU out right now. We're talking about it being, a, a, you know, <coughs> where we're going to go on it being a school or a program. Um, there's an MOU for the end of this year. The, if I have been, correct me if I'm wrong. But it states that at the end of this year, in the next year, that our mentors in there will be able, it will be a, uh, a position that our teachers can flow into, bump, I don't want to say bump into, but am I, am I correct no, on the, that? the MOU to exclude them from the TFT contract expires on June 30th. It does not say where they will go. We will have to have a negotiation or we have to sit down and work that out with TFT and most likely that we had told them a while back that if they do become part of that bargaining unit that they would not fall on the same pay scale because there's so many different um, differences with them that the number so, of hours they work, they're, um, they work all year round. So all of that would have to be negotiated would be a separate, it would be good. similar to like the coaches, a separate section within TFT. Okay. So we would have to negotiate that, but that MOU would be expiring on June 30th. Yes. So if we don't act fast, we may not have no mentors come July 1. That's not my question. Thank you for summing it up for me.